Recently, I learned to do this. I'm not gonna demonstrate it because we're on a concrete floor out here and I feel like I will wreck myself and it's hopefully not that kind of video. So this is called a corkscrew and it's a move that I had nailed back when I was about 24 and then didn't practice it for a while, got scared, lost it out of fear. And then this year I've been just absolutely drilling it to try and get it back. And I thought this was a great analogy for something that we can talk about today, which is that sometimes when you're learning a skill, you're trying to learn something new, just hammering it and ramming your head against the wall isn't always the smartest way to go about it. So with this, I'd been doing hundreds of reps, just wrecking myself. And it was only making one small tweak that I realized, okay, so that's what I needed to fix. And then it all clicked. Man, thank you. That's so good. I, I told you. So the big insight was that sometimes doing hundreds of reps isn't actually very helpful. And taking a step back and being like, okay, where am I going wrong? How can I deconstruct this skill and figure out what's the part that's missing? For me, it was something really stupid. It was just turning that left foot to the left and still facing forward rather than trying to throw myself over. So, I mean, this video is not about gymnastics, but it was just a really tiny thing and that just made the whole thing click. When I went through my notes for the last couple of years and tried to look through my second brain, which you'll have seen me talk about before, that the synthesis of all of these different fields and domains of, of my life and insights and journals and everything was a really stupid insight, which was just know what reps to do and then do the reps. And it's great if you can just turn up and grind it, brilliant, but it comes down to two things. You've got, on the one hand, someone who knows everything about what to do, they're the armchair experts, but they never actually turn up and do the work. And then on the other hand, you've got someone who is just brute forcing everything, they're grinding away, but they're doing the wrong stuff. And that's why if you've seen the productivity series that I've done, which I'll link somewhere here, you'll know that the first lesson and the, the fundamental feature of productivity or improving your efficiency is that what is more important than how? Because before you start looking at how can I pedal faster and how can I optimize this and how can I get there quicker, you've got to make sure that is there actually where you want to get to. So how do you deconstruct the skill and how do you figure out where your blind spots are and what you should be working on? Well, the, the easiest way is always going to be hire a coach because you've got blind spots that you'll never be able to see simply because they are your blind spots. So in this case, I hired a coach. Here's a couple of names of people that I got in touch with and I sent them the videos of me doing these attempts and for them, it was crystal clear. They could be like, ah, oh, mate, you're just doing this, this and this, go away and fix that. And at each point, it stepped it up and it allowed me to, to break through the next level and reclaim that skill. So broadly, the scale of learning anything is divided into three main pillars. So you've got learning, you've got practice, and then you've got feedback so that you know that your practice is, is working and taking you towards the right direction. So the first thing is the resources. Don't be afraid to dump useless resources. If you're learning something and you're finding a lot of friction with how you're learning it, or you feel a sense of sunk cost, well, I've bought this course now, so I need to stick with it. You need to get out of that mindset because that's just gonna slow you down. The second thing is textbooks. Textbooks are an absolute gold mine. So no, people ignore them because they're dense and they're, by definition, they're the, the densest thing that you could possibly read and they're boring. And everyone is gravitating to the, the 45 second TikTok video on three quick tips to achieve X. But your competitive advantage is if you can go down to the textbook and look at the, the source, you're always gonna get the gold standard information and the stuff that is most applicable and most pure. It's not gonna have been wrapped up in marketing speak. So use textbooks, go to the source as much as you can, whatever that is, the, the primary source of learning materials. The third option for finding a resource is find an expert or someone who has synthesized the information for you. They've done all the learning and the mistakes and they can come to you with all of that packaged into something personalized for you. 
So that's what I did. I heard Johannes, who is an expert in this, he's been round the houses with learning to improve his technique and making all the mistakes that I had. And by paying him to accelerate the journey for me and to solve all the mistakes and save myself from running into every different brick wall, that was invaluable. So what that is is someone who is a synthesizer. They've taken all of the, the lessons from the primary sources and they've delivered it to you on a plate. So here's a couple of examples of the video feedback that I kindly got from Johannes and Kayo and Zach. And you can see how having specific feedback saves so much grinding. But then like this leg needs to raise up in front of you longer. If you can fix this, the rest will come a lot better. This, this leg. You see, this one goes like this. Try As well as that amazing training environment here, you can see that Josh has organized a chain of corks for moral support to try and give me the, the power and the impetus to, to land this, which sadly didn't work. As you can see there, despite my multiple attempts at slamming. The next one is from Dr. Yusuf Smith. Heck yeah, bro. Uh, also, like, you should, like, read uh, audiobooks or something, because, like, your voice is nice, bro. Let's give it a look. So what I'm seeing right off the bat is the swing. Stand-up that you're doing right there is, like, really good. You're really trying to stay straight, which I would argue is not going to help you at all on single corks. 50 legs nice. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that's a common mistake. We've covered the learning and how to pick the best resources, how to pick the primary sources, the textbooks, the synth synthesizers. And then next we've got practice. So this is where you're going and doing the skill. And you've heard about deliberate practice. That's the whole idea that rather than broadly practicing a skill, you look at what are the sub-components, the sub-skills within that. So in this case, rather than I'm gonna try and throw some corkscrews and hope that I land one, it's okay, how can I work on my setup and just keep doing the setup. And then it's like, okay, how can I work on my arm swing? And it doesn't matter if the other parts of the skill are a bit crap while you're doing that because your attention is focusing on improving that one thing. Then you can fit it into the broader skill later. Whereas if you're trying to focus on 10 things at once, you'll end up focusing on none of them. You little bastard, why didn't you just land it? <laughs> that was so good. The next step on learning any skill is drill the basics. It sounds so boring and no one wants to do that because we all think that we're too advanced for this stuff and we get it with, you know, if you've been lifting for five years, going in and having a technique session where you try and improve your technique and make sure you've got all the, everything in place from belt position to foot position to uh, bracing to breathing. And you might think, oh, well, I'm above that. I've been lifting for years. But anything is just the basics. A any skill is 90% basics and 10% advanced stuff. And the real pros are always going back to drilling the basics. And you'll have to pay the price anyway. So Coach Sommer is a gymnastics coach that always brings people back to doing nauseating amounts of basic drills. And I'm slowly seeing the, the sanity, the, 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 the rationale for this now, because if you try and skip ahead, those cracks in your basic technique with doing you know, basic gymnastic skills like jumping up on the spot or doing um, dish dish holds and all this kind of stuff you think come on that's like year five pe level but if you don't have full core tension you're not able to maintain that doing a, a backflip then trying to go from backflip to double backflip is going to be a no-go the final bit about practice is make it as hard as possible for yourself so scott young talks about if you're learning a foreign language isolate the variables and let's say when you're practicing you try and only do it when you're speaking on the phone because that eliminates you getting around your deficiencies in your language by trying to overdo the body language or trying to like draw pictures or something when you're speaking to someone in person. So it isolates all the, the kind of non-verbal bits of the communication that you can cheat and it makes you do it hard. So for example, deficit deadlifts, it's the same thing. You're, you're making it harder than it needs to be so that you can practice the part of the skill. So in this case, it might be pulling off the floor. 
And so you, you make pulling off the floor as difficult as possible so that when it comes to competition day and you only have to pull from mid shin rather than like scraping your face off the floor, it feels so much easier. Okay, so we've covered the learning, the practice, the feedback, and really the feedback was just about filming myself as much as possible, watching back and reviewing it and giving it to a coach to review as well and spotting my blind spots. And the final bit is your notes. So notes are, and this is why I've got such a stiffy for the second brain idea, because that's all of the curated stuff for you held in an archive. So it's notes from your past self to your future self. And when you go back on it, it's always going to be the, the creme de la creme, the, the stuff that has been handpicked for you. So don't take note note taking lightly. Covered the idea of hiring a coach. It's just a no brainer. It will always accelerate your journey. And it took me too long to learn that. I used to be really prissy about, oh no, I don't want to spend on a coach. I'll just do it myself. Like, what do they know kind of thing. And looking back, there's so many years wasted by not just accepting. And maybe it's an ego thing, just thinking like, oh, I'll be able to figure it out on my own. Yeah, of course you, you might well be able to. You're watching this video, you're probably smart enough to figure all this stuff out on your own, but hire someone who has been through that journey and save yourself the time. You're gonna pay for the learning either way, either with time or with money if you hire a coach. So that's always one that you should just don't think twice about doing. Obviously, just make sure that you hire the right person and that's a whole other conversation. And then the final supercharger for all of this is separate planning from execution. So when you're in the planning phase, you're figuring out what you need to do, you're gathering the feedback, you then regroup and then you execute the plan. So it all comes down to know what reps to do and do the reps. Hopefully you enjoyed this. You can apply this to learning any skill. If you're new to the channel, we help coaches and trainers, anyone who has any kind of expertise in getting somebody a result to move their service online and access many more people and achieve financial freedom. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, Johnny, my business partner, has a free video where he covers the whole process that we use. It's all for free. You don't need to look behind any paywalls. You don't no no funny business. So you can watch that or you can also book in a call with us if you want to discuss your situation and see if we can help you. Hope you enjoyed. I'll speak to you soon. Right, I can't end the video without bringing this to your attention. So I was gonna do this as the grand finale, but I ripped my pants on this cork. I'm trying to show the camera here, but, <laughs> but you can't tell on the footage. So it looks like I've just gone fully insane.